All right. I promised you partnerships and oh boy, do we have them. We've got a bunch of different types of partnerships. We've got general partnerships, limited liability partnerships, and just limited partnerships. So just, uh, it, you know, as our first pass through, you're not going to probably get absolutely everything here. There's a lot of different attributes and criteria for all of these. Take it one step at a time. And again, we also do have other lessons on partnerships. So it's not like you have to master all this right away. One key point to note is that limited partnerships are different than limited liability partnerships. That's LLPs and LPs. Again, that's just an important distinction as well. So LLPs and LPs are more similar to each other compared to general partnerships. LLPs and LPs offer some form of limited liability protection to their partners, whereas in a general partnership, all partners have unlimited liability. We're going to talk eventually, in actually many lessons, about recourse and non-recourse debt. That's important to note. Recourse debt, if you want to just make a note of it, recourse debt is uh, debt where someone can come after you personally for your assets. Non-recourse debt is debt where they cannot. They can only come after the assets of the partnership or the legal entity. So that's just something to note. I mean, you don't have to know it yet. We will see it in a lot of lessons. If you want to memorize that now, I would not say that's a bad idea. We got some main differences between general partnerships, limited liability partnerships, and limited partnerships. Now, generally speaking, like I said, GPs have unlimited liability, and as such, they are going to deal a lot more with recourse debt. These others are going to deal with non-recourse debt, where people can't come after your personal assets. Let's talk about the liability. So memorizing the differences between all these types of entities. We see GP, LLP, LP. We see we're running through liability, management, formation, taxation. Nice comparison of all of these types of entities. Now, under a GP, all partners have unlimited personal liability. You might say that sucks, and to which I'd say, I agree, that's not ideal. But there are benefits to GPs as well, and we'll talk about that a lot in our partnerships lesson. Now, LLPs here, partners have limited liability protection. Hey, it's almost as if that's in the name, meaning that they're not personally liable for the debts and the obligations of the partnership arising from negligence, malpractice, or wrongful acts committed by other partners or employees. And for LPs, there are at least one general partner with unlimited liability and one or more limited partners with liability limited to the extent of their investment in the partnership. That's something we'll see time and time again. LPs are tied to GPs. So LPs kind of think it's it's not a direct comparison. I'll, I'll say that. LPs, you can kind of think of like shareholders and GPs as like a joint owner, but CEO of what's going on. That is totally not how it actually works, but that's a way to kind of think about how these individuals work together. So you could be just uh, I, I own 5% of the partnership. I'm kind of passive. I don't really get involved with it, but I initially contributed some cash, some capital. The GP ha maybe owns, let's say, 45% uh, of the whole entity, is a lot more involved, deals with the operations. That's kind of just, just starting to paint a picture of what that looks like. Again, we're not trying to make you an expert right away. Of course, we're trying to make you an expert by the end of all this, but uh, start to get an idea. Limited partnerships and general partnerships kind of tied together in that sense. Now, a lot of times these could just be individuals. So one, you know, person A is the GP, person B is the LP. That's the way you can think about it. Management for a GP, all partners have equal rights to manage the business directly unless otherwise agreed upon. So we see you have unlimited personal liability, but you also, you manage the business directly. Where, as we're going to see, limited partners can't really do that as much. Now, limited liability partnerships, all partners have the right to participate in the management of the partnership. And for LPs, general partners manage the business, while limited partners typically do not participate in management and they act more as passive investors. So pros and cons to being a general partner versus a limited partner. That's the nature of the exam, right? You got to make choices. There are options within the tax code. What do you choose to do? Do you take a little more risk? Do you take a little more safety? That is totally up to whatever it is you're looking for. And that's why I said within these sims, we're going to have to decide what is the most advantageous decision for these theoretical taxpayers. Formation for a general partnership, you don't need any specific paperwork or filings to create the GP, although some states may require registration of anything like that. But generally speaking, there's no paperwork if a question asks, there's, there's nothing to file. That's, that's the main point. LLPs, to form an LLP, you must file a registration document with the state and the partnership must meet any other state specific requirements. Not that we'll ever need to know the state specific requirements, but just so that you're aware of them. And then lastly, for an LLP, you have to file a certificate of limited partnership with the state in which it operates. So understanding the implications, the differences there as well. And lastly, for taxation, for a GP, the partnership itself is not taxed. Instead, profits and losses flow through. It's a flow through entity to the partner's individual tax returns. For LLPs, similar to a GP, we're going to see a lot of similarities here. LLP is a pass-through entity. 
same thing, same exact treatment. And then lastly, LPs, they're also passed through entities, which means that profits and losses are allocated between general and limited partners according to the partnership agreement. Maybe you have a 50-50 split, one is an LP, one's a GP. That is how that could work. Overall, I'd say LLPs, we're not going to really deal with them in terms of numerical calculation-based questions. GPs, LPs, for sure. So when we actually get into the partnership lessons, we're going to see GPs and LPs. I'd say focus in on those more so than LLPs. But here's a comparison between all of these, making sure you understand that they are different legal entities. What are the differences between them? But the main ones we need to know are GPs and LPs. And mainly, again, just because those are the ones we're going to see numerical calculation-based questions on. All right. Well, as promised, and as I just said, general and limited partners are the more important ones. And as such, we've got another slide comparing the two of those here. Now, in a partnership, there are two types of partners, general partners and limited partners. Again, we, we did talk about LLPs, and I'm not saying all of a sudden they just don't exist. But when we talk about partnerships overall in general, we're talking about partnerships that have GPs and LPs. Here are key differences, and we're going to beat this to death, and you're going to make sure that you memorize all this stuff. General partners have unlimited liability for the debts and obligations of the partnership. This means that they're personally responsible for any debts or legal obligations incurred by the partnership. Now, in contrast, limited partners have limited liability, which means that their liability is limited to the amount of their investment in the partnership. In terms of managing the partnership, GPs are responsible for managing the partnership and making decisions about the day-to-day -day operations of the business. In contrast, limited partners are passive investors and do not participate in the management of the partnership. Again, we'll, we will paint many more pictures, give you examples as we continue with this lesson and dive into the partnership. Uh, lessons as well, but this is really just getting you started. You're, you're starting to understand. You want to memorize these attributes of them. In terms of investment, generally GPs invest more in partnerships than LPs, and it kind of makes sense. Uh, they have a lot more at stake. GPs may contribute capital or expertise to the partnership, while limited partners usually contribute only capital. So it's just kind of being like a passive investor. Profits and losses. General partners and limited partners may receive profits and losses from the partnership, but the allocation of these profits and losses may be different. Now, general partners typically receive a larger share of the profits and losses than limited partners since they're going to be responsible for managing the partnership. Next up, we got liability for the obligations. As we've seen, general partners are personally liable for the partnership obligations, including debt and legal claims. So if this is a legal firm partnership and they do something completely illegal, a lot of times the GPs are the ones on the hook and whoever is suing you could probably come after your personal assets. It's not very good. You hate to see it. Limited partners are generally not responsible for the partnership's obligations as they do not materially participate in the management of the partnership. Transferring ownerships, GPs can transfer their ownership in the partnership without consent of other partners. However, in contrast, limited partners may be restricted in their ability to transfer without the consent of the other partners. So again, pros and cons to deciding to be a GP or an LP. And lastly, fiduciary duty. General partners owe a fiduciary duty, meaning they have to act in the best interest of the partnership and not themselves, whereas limited partners do not have that duty. Limited partners can act in their own best interest. That is something that a GP could get sued for, for not acting in the best interest of the partnership. Great example, if there's a business deal that the GP as an individual person could benefit from, well, if the partnership could benefit from it, they may have a legal obligation to act in the best interest of the partnership and provide that business opportunity to the partnership rather than themselves personally. Now, overall, general partners are going to be responsible for managing that partnership, and they have unlimited liability. While limited partners are passive investors with limited liability, the allocation of profits and losses may be different between these two, and there may be restrictions on the transfer of ownership for limited partners. Looking good, feeling good, powering through, having a good time. Make sure you're stretching, have your energy drinks, drinking coffee, eat some fruit, some veggies, take care of the body. Let's keep going through. We got an example now. We're going to compare general and limited partners. Greenscape Landscaping is a partnership between two general partners. We've got Alice and Bob, and then a limited partner, Carol. ABC, gotta love it. Nice and simple. Alice and Bob are experienced landscapers who contribute their expertise to the partnership, while Carol is a passive investor who contributes capital to support the business's growth. Now, this is another example of why I compared passive limited partners to kind of like shareholders, which again is not a, a direct actual comparison. It's just kind of how I like to think about it. So you, you see here though, how it actually kind of works. You need LPs for capital contributions. Also after having worked in the asset wealth management, uh, investment management space for quite a bit and audit and tax, 
you see how LPs are kind of just, okay, one LP is the Harvard Endowment Fund. Another LP is the Alaska you know, uh, Government Worker Pension Fund. And they invest capital in there to get a return on whatever the general partners are doing. That's kind of how that works, just like a little insight into the industry. But kind of tying real examples to all of this, that's what you're going to see in the real world as well as how it works on the exam and just how these entities are structured. Now, in terms of liability, Alice and Bob, they are the general partners. They have unlimited liability for the debts and the obligations of Greenscape Landscaping. This means that they are going to be personally responsible for any debts or legal obligations that are incurred by the partnership. However, in contrast, Carol, as a limited partner, has limited liability, meaning that her liability is going to be limited to the amount of her investment in the partnership. In terms of management, Alice and Bob seem to be quite actively managing that partnership and making decisions about the day-to-day -day operations of the business. However, Carol, as a limited partner, does not participate in the management of the partnership and is going to remain a passive investor. Now, in terms of investment, Alice and Bob are investing more in the partnership than Carol. Alice and Bob contribute their time, expertise, and capital, while Carol only contributes capital. So kind of, again, like a shareholder. But again, that's just a comparison coming from my mind, not something that actually <laughs> works that way in real life. For profits and losses, both general and limited partners receive a share. However, their allocation may differ. This, I would defer to the partnership agreement, which if it's important enough, you would receive it as an exhibit on the sim you may see, or it might discuss it in the multiple choice question. Now, Alice and Bob typically receive a larger share of the profits and losses than Carol, since they're going to be responsible for managing the partnership. In terms of liability for partnership obligations, Alice and Bob, as general partners, are personally liable for the partnership's obligations. Ding, 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 a recourse debt. Again, like I said, we will talk about this many more times throughout many lessons, but recourse debt is where if I take out a loan and it happens to be recourse debt with a bank, the bank can come after my personal assets. If it's non-recourse, the bank can only come after the assets of the entity I am associated with, such as a partnership or anything like that, including debts and legal claims. Now, Carol, as a limited partner, is generally not personally liable for the partnership's obligations as long as she does not participate in the management of the partnership. Kind of like the concept of piercing the corporate veil when it comes to cor uh, corporations, right? So if we are dealing with a corporation, there is, and this is something we'll see when we deal with corporations as well. When we deal with corporations, generally speaking, as we've said, there is limited liability and generally no liability. If I'm a shareholder of Apple, I'm not going to. Uh, have to worry about being sued for Apple's misdeeds. However, if it's a let's say a smaller corporation, just a better example, and I start to commingle my funds with the corporation's funds, that could result in me being personally liable for the corporation. It needs to be a separate legal entity, meaning kind of like you mentally clock in, you physically clock in uh, with your assets, with everything. You need to keep the corporation as separate from you as possible in order for that corporation to have any legal obligation for anything. If you personally start to commingle your time, energy, funds with the entity, you can also be personally liable. So that's a concept, again, called piercing the corporate veil, as in like the veil of the corporation protects itself, protects all of its shareholders from obligations. It absorbs all of the liability. But if you pierce the corporate veil, you are personally liable for anything dealing with that entity. Now, lastly, regarding the transfer of ownership, Alice and Bob can transfer their ownership in Greenscape Landscaping without the consent of other partners. In contrast, Carol may be restricted in her ability to transfer her ownership without the consent of the other partners due to her limited liability partner status. Very good, moving on to our next one. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together. <laughs> 